Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on laptop input devices. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of our 22701 Essentials exam, section 1.10 where we're going to look at laptop input devices. We're going to look at the stylus and the digitizer that we can find on many portable and laptop devices. We're going to look at function keys and FN keys and third party keys and how they work. And we'll also look at point devices like touch pads, point sticks, or track points. The idea of using a stylus or a digitizer has been around for quite some time. We've been using them for many, many years. And even some of the latest mobile devices have stylus that you can use and that are required to be able to work with these devices. The screens of these devices are touch sensitive, not just with your, not with your finger, but with a stylus that's specially designed to work with that screen. So if you lose the stylus, you're in trouble. You have to have a stylus to be able to use this. It's not pressure sensitive. It's really very specific to this type of stylus that we happen to be using. Some screens will use both. They'll use both a stylus and a touch, but usually it's a very specialized stylus that is about the size of your finger whenever you're pushing it down on the screen. It really doesn't provide you with exactly the detail that a very specialized stylus might, which is why the stylus was created. So you can get very, very intricate drawing on a screen, especially a mobile device where you don't have a lot of real estate there. But I just want to make sure that if you're using that stylish, that you also have that digitizer there, because one generally will not work without the other. One of the challenges that we have on most laptops is that the keyboards are really small. These are not the full-size keyboards we're accustomed to having. And if you've used a full-size keyboard, you know you've got a separate section for arrow keys. There's an entire numeric keypad off to the side. And you generally don't get that in a laptop. In fact, your keyboard's really scrunched together with everything all in one place. You've got arrow keys, fortunately. But there's no separate numeric keypad, for instance, to be able to do some of these things. So what we've done is we've enabled these other keys that normally would just be the letter U. And you can see a little blue 4 written next to that. And that means that we can use our blue function key along with that U. And instead of it typing a U, it puts the letter 4 or the number 4. So we can hold down the function key. And you'll notice you kind of have a numeric keypad here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that's built into the existing keyboard. Yes, it's a little bit kludgy, and it's certainly not the same as having a numeric keypad on your computer. But it allows us to use those keys as if we did have a numeric keypad on our computer. So it extends that capability. As long as you're able to use that function key, there it is on our screen, you can use that function key to be able to type those numbers out. You've also got other capabilities. There's a standby option, a hibernate option. I can turn on and off my wireless connectivity. It might show me the status of my battery. I can switch between the external video port and the LCD that's built into the laptop all by using that function key. Notice if you're using a full-size keyboard, that function key doesn't even exist on your full-size keyboard. It's really something that's very specific to laptop environments. Well, if there's no room for a keyboard, there's certainly no room for a mouse to be able to be on our keyboards of our laptop. So it becomes a little bit more difficult to use a pointing device. So what we've done on most laptops is we've enabled different po pointing technologies. Here's a little point stick that's built into this laptop. And I also have this pad that's on this laptop where we'd simply place our finger on it. And by using our fingertip, we're emulating what we would normally use with a mouse. So that helps us a little bit to keep a very, very small form factor. We can use it in very cramped environments, like on a plane. And we don't need the extra room that a mouse might have. And these. Uh, these track pads, we call them, are places where we use our finger. And you'll notice there's mouse buttons right underneath. So our left mouse button and our right mouse button is just built into the keyboard view itself so that we're able to use our same mouse functionality but still have it in a very small form factor. The track pads or the, the track sticks that we might have is a single stick. And if you move that little nub up a little bit, it will move the arrow up a little bit. You point it, push it down, it moves the arrow down on the screen. So it's one that really uses almost no real estate. It's built in the keyboard, and yet we're still able to use a mouse. Let's review some of these input functions on our laptops. Our first question is, what key allows you to access secondary features on our laptop? We saw on our keyboard, our laptop keyboard, we had one special button there, and that was the function key. 
Our second question, which pointing device is usually integrated into the middle of the keyboard? Using practically no real estate, that is our little point stick or our track point stick that we can use to move the mouse around. And our last question is, which input technology uses a touch sensitive screen and a very specialized pointing device? We saw that one originally in this video, and that's our stylus and our digitizer. That covers what we need to know for our essentials exam in section 1.10, where we've gone through the stylus and the digitizer, the function keys, and we've looked at other pointing devices that are built into our laptop technologies. If you'd like to watch other laptop videos and all of our CompTIA A-plus videos, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.